Hey peeps, today we're going to go over hypersensitivity reactions and infusion reactions. Uh, this will be based off of a SGO clinical practice statement that I've um, put a picture on here. Um, and let's get to it. So hypersensitivity reactions, most are delayed hypersensitivity reactions. So you'll see um, here in this picture, this is associated with a repeat or prior exposure to, in this case, the chemotherapy. The most common symptoms would in, will include itching, chest pain, trouble breathing, throat tightening, abdominal pain, but you can also see vital sign changes such as hypoxia, tachycardia, hypotension, fever, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, so I want to draw your attention over to the um, type 4 hypersensitivity cell-mediated reaction. Um, these are amplified by an immune response resulting from prior exposure to an antigen, and in this case from a chemotherapy drug um, or foreign substance. And so realize it requires a prior exposure to the agent. That's opposed to infusion reactions. So um, infusion reactions usually occur with the first exposure um, and these are typically associated with a dilutant or a formulation of a drug. So let's think of like paclitaxel is usually diluted in cremophore and a lot of people have infusion reactions to the cremophore. Um, sometimes these occur if um, they were given too quickly after being pre-medicated. Um, and these symptoms include flushing, they can include chest pain, abdominal pain, back pain, um, but they can also have some vital signs changes. So it is a little bit difficult to distinguish between a hypersensitivity reaction and an infusion reaction at first. Um, and for a hypersensitivity reaction, typically um, these people are not tested again. Um, usually they, go, they have to undergo a desensitization protocol, which this article does talk about, but we won't touch on this lecture today. Um, infusion reactions usually do not require desensitization, or I should say they don't require desensitization. Um, instead, decreasing the rate will usually, rate of infusion will resolve the issue in um, most cases. So key ways to differentiate hypersensitivity versus infusion reactions. A hypersensitivity reaction will uh, continue and it may even worsen after the chemo has stopped, but an infusion reaction will usually improve and respond to some pre-medications once the chemotherapy has stopped. So let's talk about management of hypersensitivity reactions. So you're in the call room and you get a page, emergency to the infusion center. Um, we have a patient who is getting carboplatin. It's her eighth time receiving carboplatin and it's been a while since she's gotten it before. She is having chest pain. She's having trouble breathing, tachycardic, hypotensive. Uh, what do we do? So you want to notify them to discontinue the infusion immediately and you'll head over there. Um, the SGO clinical practice statement, they really um, emphasize that these orders should already be in the order set with the chemotherapy. And I would say in most institutions that is the case. So the nurses um, at the infusion center will know what to do for the most part. And um, for the most part, they're probably more experienced than um, trainees with infusion reactions. But um, you always want to check immediately when you get there that the infusion has been discontinued and even removing it from the IV. Um, in the, within the order set, sh you should have antihistamines such as Benadryl and Famotidine. Um, steroids should be in the order set. Um, the antihistamines, they will not stop the progression of the hypersensitivity reaction, but they should relieve some of the symptoms. As opposed to the steroids, those will um, attempt to stop the progression of a hypersensitivity reaction. They will also modulate the immune system and decrease inflammation. And then if the patient is still getting worse after these um, symptoms or after these steps, um, epinephrine will be your next step. And so here I just have a nice chart of um, some of the medications and supportive measures that can be used, um, their doses and what the mechanism is behind why we're using them. Um, oxygen and saline, so um, both supportive measures oxygen to help breathing difficulties, hydration 
with normal saline to assist in the blood pressure if, if the patient's hypotensive. Um, and then antihistamines, these can help relieve symptoms, as I mentioned. Um, steroids, hydrocortisone, methylprednisolone, as well as dexamethasone, stops progression, helps modulate the immune response, also relieves inflammation. And then a non-selective adrenergic agonist, aka epinephrine. Um, sometimes the dose is important to know, and so um, a 1 to 1,000 dilution, and then giving 0.2 to 0.5 ml sub Q or IM. And um, the given mechanism action relaxes smooth muscle, um, can improve, improve breathing, increases blood pressure. And so then we have our infusion reaction management. So um, at first you won't know whether or not it's an infusion reaction or a hypersensitivity reaction. So it is recommended that you follow the hypersensitivity reaction management um, still with immediate discontinuation, antihistamines, steroids, see if the patient is getting better. Um, you should at some point, you may be able to know whether or not it's an infusion reaction or hypersensitivity reaction as we discussed earlier if the patient starts getting better. Um, and so in maybe instead of giving epinephrine, you're waiting to see if the patient improves. Once they start improving, um, maybe little by little, you can give additional doses of steroids or antihistamines before you restart therapy. Um, and then the article talks about considering slowing the titration, slowing increasing titrations of the infusion rate in 15 minute intervals. So kind of dividing things up into 15 minute intervals to be sure that the patient will tolerate the administration. And that's it. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you have any other tips for hypersensitivity reactions? And any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks.